Well, hey, Gundam Maniacs, welcome to another episode of Gundam Explained. In this episode, we're going to find out who actually is the strongest and most powerful new type of them all. I mean, if, is that even possible? Is that written down somewhere? Did they mention that in the movie or manga or something? I don't know, but we're going to find out. But before we get started, if you haven't, please subscribe. If you think this is a cool video, give it a like. Check the links in the description for ways you can support the channel. Also, check out our Discord. We have a lot of fun there, but let's get started. What is a new type? Well, I have some videos I've put up about some new types, some powers, talking about what they can possibly do, but new types are an evolution of humanity. It's like the idea of where does humanity go, and it's the mind uh, evolving into something else, transcending its physical form. But before you transcend your physical form, maybe there's something you can do more with your mind, some things that are like part of conspiracy theories or in legend or in myth. So it's pretty cool that uh, I think. Gundam has, and Tomon specifically, has taken that new type concept the way they've had, similar to what we see with Star Wars and the Force. Yeah, it's another, yet another Star Wars comparison with Gundam I do all the time, but hey, it works here. In Gundam, they're, new types are seen as powerful weapons and even used and manipulated in that way. And they're even seen to have superhuman strength, but sometimes it's a little more than that. So if we look at the Dynasty Warriors games, uh, new types are separated into four categories of their powers. So there's the combat new types, uh, empathic new types, cyber new types, and overwhelming new types. So with the combat new types, that kind of makes sense there, right? It's, it's about how they are in combat. Usually they can sense things around them, slow down time, be able to react faster, maybe even be strong in some ways when it comes to combat. Empathic are new times that um, uh, who retain their burst, so that has to do with the game. But with the term empathic, you can kind of get an idea. It's more mind-based of a new type. Um, with the cyber new types, obviously ones that are created in a lab. But when you create a cyber new type in a lab, what is it actually you're trying to do or manipulate to make them the new type? I, I think it seems it's more of can they operate this machinery that really only new types can, be in like a mobile suit with a Saikamu or something. So with the overwhelming new types, it's where they're like raw strength and potential. So uh, overbearing on another new type, it could freeze them in place. Um, so that just another category that's used. And it's interesting, Dynasty Warriors was a good game to kind of uh, categorize that because a lot of times it takes a video game or a tabletop to sort of uh, categorize uh, certain concepts um, that are you know featured in a, a show, a movie, uh, in order to kind of put, uh, I guess, a numerical value on it. Uh, yeah, for the purpose of its stats in a game. But new types cannot be categorized. New types have different talents and excel in their comfort zone, which means that every new type's power is different. Uh, some of the more common abilities are often, uh, even compared to a Jedi or Sith ability from Star Wars again, you know, speaking of Star Wars, so that could be precognition, uh, faster reflexes, increased awareness, and even telepathy. And it's really cool what they do in Star Wars. And I think we see that in Gundam is sometimes a specific new type might have like a specific ability that's only uh, found with that new type or force user. Something that they just happen to be able to hone in on and use correctly. Uh, later in the Gundam series, it's even shown that with enough power, a uh, new type can deflect beams through the realization of their emotions. So that was seen in Double Zeta by both Haman and Judo Ashita. So with that in mind, what powers do new types possess? Well, we could do this by looking at the different new types uh, that exist in Gundam UC, and maybe from that we can determine who's the most powerful. So let me know what you think. Amuro Ray, the first known new type. Is that true? Is capable of communicating telepathically, has a strong level of precognition, and has great reactions unlike most not necessarily tied to him being a new type, but by Shar's counterattack, he's an excellent tactician as well. He is also able to utilize funnel-type weapons, as was shown in his first ever battle while piloting the new Gundam. Interesting about Amuro Ray, because we see him from you know the first Gundam you see show, where he wasn't too sure about him being a new type, but he also wasn't too sure about being in battle and fighting. And yeah, by the time we get to Shar's counterattack, he was all about that fighting. He was all about that stopping Char, yes, as a great tactician, um, coming up with awesome suit designs using the fin funnels on the new Gundam. But yeah, when it comes to Char Aznable, Amore's uh, rival uh, is said to have similar abilities to Amore, but lacks the empathy 
which makes sense and uh, best describe the sensitivity to use those same skills as well as Amaro can. So while they may be equal, maybe in terms of strength, that lack of empathy, I think, gives uh, Amaro that one up. Is that part of like being the good guy? Does maybe being good natured give you that one up in battle, one up as a new type? I find that very interesting. But, uh, you know, Shar's raw strength um, as a new type is not to be undermined because put it against really any other new type. But, you know, Shar was able to do quite a bit uh, during the one year war and after. So, Camille Badan. Currently the strongest in terms of talent? Well, according to uh, Yoshiyuki Tomino, uh, he's canonically the most powerful uh, new type in UC. Camille has shown exceptional abilities, such as enhancing the Zeta's total performance through the biosensor system, even going as far as to lock the O from moving. In Double Zeta, it is even suggested that Camille lent his power to Judo Ashta. Therefore, new types can even share their abilities with each other. Yeah, that was the interesting thing and why I like Double Zeta, even though it kind of has that weird, slow, kind of kid-like beginning. We see Camille still in his vegetative state, but he's able to communicate with Judo to help him push forward during what the Universal Century Earth Sphere was going through uh, in order to, you know, help stop Neo Zeon or whatever. Uh, by the end, you know, Camille was reunited with Foss. So we see from Camille sort of like completely, you know, stopping uh, the Titans um, and putting the Neo Zeon in their place during Zeta. Even in his vegetative state, he was able to lead the initiatives of maybe Earth Federation, but I guess the good guys in general to where by the end, uh, Camille was back to normal with the love of his life. So uh, that worked out for him. So Paptimus Sirocco is not a new type to sleep on. His raw power was unrivaled for most of Zeta, and he was able to use his new type strength to crush Camille's mind in his dying moments. His presence alone caused pressure on nearby new types, and who knows how much of him being a new type is what allowed him to manipulate the women around him. Maybe there's the stronger pheromones uh, when it comes to uh, attracting others to you. Uh, when you're a new type, and he was able to use that, hone in on that, and manipulate that to get what he needed. Judo Ashta, another notable new type, and not even because he was the protagonist of Double Zeta, but rather because Yoshiyuki Tomino suggested that, unlike Camille, who was a very talented new type, Judo had the raw strength, meaning his power was greater than that of Shirako, who even stopped Taman and Camille in their tracks with his horrifying pressure at times. He even used his power to block attacks by channeling his new type powers through the biosensor and even enhanced the output of the enhanced Double Zeta's high mega cannon to a point it melted the enhanced Double Zeta's crest. I'm on Karn, a powerful new type that could have matched Pop to Mishraco and possibly even surpassed Char. She was uh, seen using similar powers to Judo in Double Zeta. Yeah, they were quite the match in Double Zeta, and I think she is an awesome character, and I think she even has a bit of the empathic qualities to her. As we saw in Zeta, she was willing to go as far as she could with Char without being too violent, which that sort of changed in Double Zeta. In mid to late, you see, starting with the Unicorn era, we see abilities that go beyond what we've been used to, as the advancement of Psycho Frame allows new types to even outright bond their soul with the mobile suit they are in as seen uh, in Unicorn and Phoenix. In both cases, the pilot died inside the mobile suit, but only Benaja returned to his human body, whereas Rita's body probably was damaged beyond repair to even allow her soul to return to her body. And while that was done in animation, I also want to say that stuff was done in some of the video game stories uh, before as well. And I think that's just a neat, another uh, idea, but also it cements the fact of it's being the mind uh, when it comes to new type powers. Like, it's all in the mind. You can transcend it, the physical form. In these instances uh, with Benajer and Rita, it was done under extreme duress, possibly, um, where the mind uh, kind of broke due to what it was going through. But because the new type powers were so powerful at that moment, um, it was able to... I guess, uh, haunt, if you will, the mobile suit. So this is not too similar from what we hear in legends or myths about hauntings where depending how someone died, their essence, their spirit was sort of haunting uh, what was around them because maybe they didn't properly transition to the afterlife. So that's kind of a cool way to look at that. 
So I think there'll probably be a video at another time where we'll kind of dive more into that physical transcendence of uh, certain new types where their minds, and I think Camille was able to do that even uh, while he was alive, even though he was in a vegetative state, um, that these, when the mind powers are extreme enough, they can manipulate and control things around them. But it is interesting to hear, according to Tomino, that Camille is the most powerful new type. So, curious what you guys think. Who's your favorite new type? And do you think there's someone more powerful than Camille? And do you have a reasoning behind that? I'm curious. I've always just thought Amaro was the most powerful, but it only makes sense that as time goes, humans are further being born and evolving. We're going to come across more powerful new types. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Talk later.